my life, in my life. Okay, not yet. <laughs> oh, it's so weird. There's a delay. Hi, everyone. This is Vivian. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to do a live envelope addressing. So I do this um, every month as long as there are people want to participate for um, you can sign up. Uh, wait, you can if you're on my email list, you get to participate if you, you know, uh, don't mind showing your address here. So today I am doing the envelope for this month, which is uh, November. And I have uh, two people on uh, that I'm going to to envelope that I'm, go I'm going to do. So I'm using this orange envelope. I feel like it's a nice fall color. And I'm going to uh, use this gold uh, gouache that I have uh, to write their names in maybe in brush lettering. And then I'll be using this white uh, uni ball signal bra. Mm, it's like a jelly pen to write the address and do some embellishment. So let's get started. First, I need to draw some guideline, and these two envelope, uh, these two envelopes are going to be international. So I actually have quite a lot of lines to write, and I'm always not sh quite sure about how other country, you know, the standard for addressing envelope. Uh, so after some googling and asking, I think I got it right. Uh, we'll see. We'll see if it eventually get to the destination. So the first person, uh, the first one I'm going to do is Pamela Lopez Marin, and she has. Uh, the Mexi she's from Mexico City, so there's like quite a few line of address. And her name has like a, a first, middle, and last name. So I'm going to use two lines for uh, two line for the name, and I'm going to divide her address into four lines. So actually it'll be, uh, so I'm going to do, I'm going to do um, address, name, address, name, address name address so one two wait is that right one two three four so that means let me see i'll be doing actually i need i need to do this better um oh i think i have it here already so address name address name address name address so that's the space that I need. And that means if I uh, sort of, I have this grid that I made up, it's just, you know, lines. And so it just helps me easier to center align my envelopes. So that's somewhat center, right, between five and five. And then I want to address to maybe one box over, something like here, because I think that would be a good place for address. So it be, from here to here, and then I can just use a ruler to connect these lines. So here will be the first line address. And then second address, name, and then address. And then last name, last line of address. And then I also do um, just a straight, like a center line. So I can somewhat center align everything. That's the layout that I'm going for. So now I have uh, three lines of name. So first name will be, I'm going to roughly just lightly sketch out where the name's going to be. <laughs> My landlord is outside yelling at something. So if you hear like an old lady yelling, don't mind her. She's nice. She's just loud. Kind of like my family. Oh, actually. So it's... And I'm going to write uh, sketch out pretty big because I'm going to use a brush and now I'm only using a pencil. So it'll be P-A-L. Okay, probably a little to the left. P A L O M A. It's probably hard for you to see, but uh, once I start writing it, you will see it. And then Lopez. 
Hmm. Sometimes when I write, uh, when I do a lot of envelope, I don't always uh, write, you know, sketch out everyone. Like the first few one, you get to you will sketch out, and the ones you get a hang of it, you have a better idea of you know, how to align things even without sketching. But since uh, today I'm only doing two, I might as well take the time to actually make sure the alignment is all nice and correct. And honestly, a lot of time, even when it end up quite not perfect, it's okay. Like you, after the stamp and your dress and you do some embellishment, people will not be like, oh, you know, you're missing it, you know, not aligned. So most people are quite happy when you put in any effort to write their dress. So that will be the name, and I'm actually going to use um, this really, really tiny brush. This is, um, I don't remember the name, there's no name on it, but it's uh, number two, uh, whatever brand that is. And I already diluted my gold ink. This is the Winsor Newton Design Designer Gouache. It's, um, it's very, very, it's quite expensive, but it lasts forever. You just need a little bit. And because I want a really nice coverage, I'm actually having it quite thick. It's almost like, it's a little, a little gooey, almost like a, I don't know what, syrupy. Because I want to make sure the you know, the name really stands out, really covers the envelope color. I have used this on black envelope and it really looks really nice, like gold on black. So if you're doing a wedding, if you're, you know, adventurous or avant-garde, you can go with that black and gold combination. So now I have, um, I'm just going to go for it. This is really scary to do this on live. So if I messed up, I have another envelope. <laughs> so hopefully I won't. So I'm going to try to get not too much paint on it. I don't want a huge blob. You see, like it's really nice and thick. And it's just so shiny. Okay. Oh lord. Now oh, my landlord is fixing stuff. It always happens when you're going live. Okay, so P A. Oh, oh, wow, too much. Okay, so it's sort of center, so that's nice. And if you have it, if it's too, you know, not, if it's your, if your paint is a little thin, you can just go over again and make it even, you know, more saturated. I think there is a thing on the low, oh, oh, low pass. And because I'm making the paint really thick, I have to like almost load it every time, like every stroke. But you see how like how thick it is. So I'm going to let after I write this, I'm going to let it dry and then move on to the next envelope. And uh, I may need to speed up the drying process by taking out my um, my heat gun. We'll see. Here. So that's the first name. Uh, the name of the first one. You see how shiny it is. We're going to maybe do an outline afterwards, so make it to make it even more pop. I hate the word pop when I am working as a designer. Every client comes here and said, I want my design to pop. And I just wanna, you know, I really wanna 
like pop something else. I'm like, what does that mean? But now I feel like when I'm doing video, I say that a lot. Make your design pop. I turn into my own worst nightmare. So the next one is Sophie. Sophie's from um, France. So cool. And uh, I'm going to um, do just her name and then so I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm not going to do like address, name, address. I'm going to actually stack her and stack the first last name and then four lines of address. So that's the space I need. So likewise, I'm going to position where I want and then make just guidelines. A lot of these steps I do is only because I'm doing it because I'm just addressing two envelope. But um, when you get to do a lot, you you know obviously you don't want to do so many, so you can skip the steps. Like do a few, and then you 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 know your hand eye coordination and your your idea of how these um how these address will fill up the space will be better, so you don't have to draw the guideline for every envelope. One, two, three, four, okay. So now I have, and then also draw a center line somewhere around here. So it'll be Sophie, and then, um, so something like, so, Sophie. Petit, I have, her, I have another friend here in New York. Her last name is Petit. She's Haitian. Okay, so Sophie Petit. So I'm using the same gold ink here. Sophie and then petite. Oops, maybe a little thing. I can't really see the chat right now, but if you have any question, you can write it in. And after I address the envelope, I can uh, I'll take a look if you and then see if I can answer any questions you might have on anything anything I do today. So there is Sophie, and now I'm going to let this thing dry, and let's check on this one is pretty much dry. But you know what, I just want to make sure I'm going to take out my heat gun just to make sure it's really, really dry. You can definitely just let it air dry or use your know, hair dryer. But since I have a heat gun, might as well use it.
That was a little too aggressive. Now it's like bubbly up. <laughs> okay, well, which one was first? Okay, this one. So now I'm going to use this white gel pen to write the address. And we can just move this gold paint away. And then her dress is really quite long. Um, and also because this is um, quite long, that's why I wrote this, her dress on the, on just, you know, on the edge of paper first. This one, Paloma is Carolina. So I have it like, on the edge of paper so I can kind of uh, just align the center to center align. And like I, you know, like I mentioned, like once you do this a couple more times, you have a better idea of how much space it takes. But um, this is the first two envelopes I'm doing today, so I need, I need some help. So I'm just going to align center and kind of, you know, have a better idea of how to, where to start. And also, yeah, so somewhere on here. This is, um, this, this one, the, if you're looking for a white gel pen, this one or the jelly roll, these are my two top choice. Um, yeah, today I'm using this one. I use this a lot, um, even on my last last month's envelope, I believe. And for address, I usually just do block letter. It's just a very, it's just easier to write. And you don't have to, you just need to write the name in a fancier, and then for the address, you can totally go just very uh, simple. I'm a little scared because I usually cannot talk and write at the same time. So why do I do this on live? But Carolina, okay. And then, and I'm like hor horrible at spelling. So this is like very, very adventurous and dangerous for me to do. So this is, I think this is how they light out, like, you know, the, the street and uh, province or town something and a zip code and then Mexico City. So this line is really long, but I think this is how the, this is the way they do it. So let's do, and also for block letters, since there's no ascender, descenders, I don't have to, the spacing is just a little easier. Sorry, I really cannot talk and write at the same time, especially in a different language. This is so hard. What are you thinking? Oops, me too. Squeeze, squeeze. Okay, almost. All right, a little bit over, oh well. Okay, and then, yeah, it's not quite balanced, but like there's nothing I can do. That's just the address. Zero, three, seven, one, ten, city of Mexico. And then Mexico City, and then Mexico. Wait, did I, okay. And also with um, these foreign, language i'm always afraid that i'm gonna miss these accent okay so i think that's so that's and then i'm gonna let this white ink white um you know gel pen dry a little bit until i do more embellishment so let's do sophie so for sophie it's another really long address and actually i have like trouble real you know defi deciding where i want to break i think I mean, from what I found on the internet, these two are supposed to be in one line, but I think that's just too long. So I'm going to actually break these two. So it would be here, right here to here. So that's... Ah, oh, this makes me feel so good. Like, writing a foreign address, you know, I... Nobody has been traveling for, you know, this year. Or I haven't been traveling. So this kind of feels very nostalgic. 
the idea of foreign country, visiting foreign country. P E R T. Okay. I think you have. You'll be surprised how many times I write the correct thing, and then I still must you know, make a mistake. <laughs> Some like I my I have a cousin who's a designer and every time I write a typo he'd be like yeah because for us designers all these things are just you know symbols icons they don't really like we just look at the curve and the line so we don't really see typo we don't see them that way we just see like oh is the spacing right is the curve nice T E N E N T A one, and then this is in one line. She lives in the town or a city called Orange, or that's cool, Orange County. Yeah, we have Orange County here in the state. So eight. Okay, so that's our basic address. Now we can see what we can do to spice things up. So even though the names are really shiny, I think you can use some maybe shadowing. So I'm going to, is this dry? Just make sure it's dry because I don't want to smudge anything. I could also use, oh actually I can just use this. Use a piece of paper, just make sure I'm not smudging anything. So I'm going to draw a very simple, like a shadow effect. I, um, this is like a very basic embellishment. Just drawing a shadow on the left side of the letter, of um, the strokes. So if you want to also be part of this project that I'm doing, you can, I have, I think I didn't put the link, but I, later on I'm going to put the link to sign up for an um, envelope um, that you, if you want to receive an um, envelope in the next month, that you can uh, give me your information. And if you don't mind your address being shown on, you know, videos like this. Oh, see, I smudged it. Darn. And then Sophie. So now I only do a shadow on the, the you know the shadow on the left side. You can also do it like the underside. Do I want to do that? Mm. Now nah, I'm going to leave it like this. Okay, so now we still have all these white space. I'm going to just speed up the drying process with the heat gun again, just to make sure I'm not I'm not you know ruining it.
And now I can go in to remove these these pencil lines. I drew it a little too dark. If you draw your pencil line very lightly, you probably don't even have to do this. You don't even need to erase it. But I was a little heavy handed. Okay. And since it's November here in the state, we celebrate Thanksgiving and all things nice about autumn. I'm going to do some autumn themed uh, embellishment. So for, oh, this is very scary. All right, maybe not so much in the words. I'm almost smudging it. Okay. Okay. Now I don't need that. So for, let's do, I think I'm going to draw some, um, what you call that, like uh, maple leaves. That's always nice. Maple leaves, um, there's like easy maple leaves. How I drew my maple leaves are, you draw the stem and somewhere towards the bottom, you make like another like two, I don't know. It feels like a star sign like this. But then you like, actually, no, that's not how it looks, <laughs> kind of like this. But then you make this wider, kind of like that. And then supposedly they all have like a pointy uh, lobe. So that would be like a basic shape for your, um, for a maple leaf. And then you can do like a little jagged, you know, line when you draw. So that's like the basic, that's kind of how I drew it. So the last line you can, actually I can do this. So that's how I drew maple leaves. And then some other leaves can be um, just like, a, I don't know what kind of leaf. I just see people draw this and I'm actually not, not into plants. Well, I have some plants barely surviving. So I'm not, a, you know, I have, I couldn't tell what tree from, you know, this tree from that tree. I just know like, oh, leaves can look like this. So some leaf stuff and and just mix match. You don't need many, maybe two two or three type of, you know, uh, leaves and you can you can make a whole lot out of, out of them. So I'm still going to use my white. I'm going to like embellish the around the border of this. So going to have like two, maybe two bigger leaves and then smaller leaves on the side. So two bigger maple leaves. All right, I'm not even gonna sketch it. So here we go. Uh, wait, do I want, do I want these or that? Uh, maybe I'll do this. Hey, why, what happened to my, why are you not drawing? Okay. And then So I'm just going, I'm just going for So there's one leaf and then I'll draw a smaller one maybe here. And because I'm trying to balance out, so I'm going to draw another similar size here on this corner. And I'll just fill the space with other leafy stuff. The, the trick of using these white gel pen is actually to go slow. If you draw too fast, uh, you will see like a hollow strike. Um, not strike, what do you call that? You will see, do I have something to demonstrate? Uh, because you can't see here, but if you you see, like, if you draw too fast, you'll get... Oh, no, never mind. You can't see his white ink. 
do I have another or I have this spare envelope so if you draw too fast you get like this double line so the trick is to actually draw slower to make sure that you don't get that your uh, the the ball of the pen doesn't leave a track or I don't know how to describe this and I can't talk and draw at the same time I don't know whose idea is it to, to go live So if you want like another autumn thing project, I have another video that I uh, found last year of making um, bigger lettering projects that you can check it out. And in, in there, I I have a I I also explain how to draw maple leaf more in detail, and I made a stamp out of uh, craft foam. So you can check that out if you need to make some decorations, signs for your Thanksgiving or if you're small gathering in this season. So I like to fill some empty space with dots. That's for me just a very easy way to make things more festive. So I think that's all I'm going to do today. Um, no, for this envelope. And it's just a very simple way to embellish envelope. And then, where's my other envelope? Oh, here, I <laughs> saw so I lost it. And then for this one, I'm going to draw some pumpkin. So for pumpkins and how I drew pumpkins or how, you know, for me, it's easier to think of pumpkin as like a box. And then the top and, you know, where the stem is, is somewhere, you know, uh, below the center of the box that's where the stem and you just start drawing first a uh, rectangle shape and then and then curve you know the side a little bit so just continue to build up and then finish up so there's the com pumpkin so pretty simple right draw a box a rectangle draw a stem and then make this middle part and you can you know you know they can the less perfect they are the the more organic they look so there's a pumpkin so i'm going to do this pumpkin on this envelope so maybe like a pumpkin on the left and on the right and some little some more leaves i guess So now, I, of course, I don't want to draw a box with a white pen. I'm just going to, maybe I do. So one box here. Yeah, I probably don't need that, but. So I have the, ah, come on. Okay, so I have the stem here. And then I'll just, I have like a very light fainted line here. You probably can't see. And then I'm just going to finish up this rectangular box by filling up. And there's the pumpkin. And I'll do the same here. Actually, I do still need a box. It kind of helped me, especially when I'm doing live video. Oh, my Lenore is pounding stuff now. You can make the line thicker so it's, um, it's looks more organic okay and then maybe a baby one I'll do a baby one here a baby pumpkin maybe pumpkin here And then I'll just fill it with some like leaves and stuff. Leaf and stuff.
So if you have any question about pen supplies, the brush, the paint that I use, you can let me know in the chat. Um, I'll get to it at the end of the video, which is about to come to the end. And I guess with pumpkin, there's usually these like viney stuff. So maybe like some squiggly vine. <laughs> So you might be wondering if this envelope is what you know. What if it gets dirty or gets you know rained on um, before it gets to its destination? And so what I'll do at the end, I'm not sure if I'm going to do it now, because once everything is dry, I'm going to put on a coating, so it will become like almost water resistant. Um, just to protect, you know, because this gel pen is definitely not waterproof uh, and, you know, address is written in this, so it's very important to have it make sure that it doesn't fade away or get washed away on the way. So what I'm going to use after it completely dry is to use this, this okay, I think this is what I'm, I'm going to stop here. No. Okay, I'm going to stop here. No. All right, I'm just stop. So this is the address, and uh, so these are the two envelopes that I'm doing, uh, that I'm going to send out this month. And I will use, uh, after it's completely dry, maybe I'll wait for like, you know, maybe an hour or so, make, just make sure it's really dry. I'll use this thing called Distress Glaze. It's like a really, like a paste thing, like a waxy thing. It's kind of probably like wax. I have no idea what, but you know, it it covers it. You know, just cover the whole thing. You can use finger just to rub it on, and it will give it like a protective, you know, protective coating, so it won't get, uh, so it won't get. Um, it, it becomes waterproof, and you can use finger to just smudge it on, like what I did, just rub it on, almost like you know, Vaseline or you know, like ointment, <laughs> like. But then I also use this. I also use just a, a you know, blending tool to cover the whole surface so that this is you know, extra. So I'll do that afterward. And I and then but then you don't want it to cover the stamp because because then the stamp becomes waterproof and sometimes post uh, the postal office they need to cover you know, they need to you know put a stamp on your stamp. Wait, what? Yeah, they put they put a stamp on your stamp right to cancel it. And today, because these two are international envelopes, so I got these very beautiful flower um, um, stamps. So these will probably go out later today. Hopefully, I don't know, now the mails are taking forever to get to anywhere. So I don't know, maybe two weeks <laughs> we'll get there. And then on the other side, I have um, my address. So here are my two envelopes for November. Again, if you like to if you want to be part of you know, participate in my envelope project, I am going to put the uh, link below after this video. After I finish, I'm going to put the link in the description so you can just give me your address and you won't get anything any other junk mail. That's the that play, that that link is just to I have the address and I won't send you anything else, you know, unless you opt in or unless you sign up to my other course or free stuff. But the link is just going to be uh, receiving envelope for me. And I do this um, uh, every month, I think as long as there are people participating. So 
All right, that was actually taking quite a while, 40 minutes to do this. I hope you enjoyed it and don't forget to give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to you know, continue to learn stuff about calligraphy or hand lettering. So I hope you have a good day and a good weekend and a good Thanksgiving. I'll see you next time. Bye.